Need a third-party logistics provider? Look no further, because Chipmunk might be all you need. Hey everyone, I'm Tia Jones with Mastering Pop, which is Mastering Profitability Over Popularity, and I'm also the creator of the No Fail Mastering Ecom Workflow Bundle, which is a digital marketing course that's available right now. Today, I'm gonna share with you a snippet of one of our Zoom coaching calls with special guests, Matt Carpenteri and Mark Rucciano with global 3PL provider Shipmonk. But before I do this, please click the notification bell so that you're notified when I upload a new video. I upload videos on digital marketing and SEO that will help you to generate more money and scale your e-commerce store faster. Shipmonk is the industry-leading order fulfillment services and inventory management software. Check out this 10-minute video packed with valuable insights about the software. You can be seeing any real data, and some of the orders might look a little bit funny, but everything that you see here is perfectly representative of what an actual Shipmonk customer would see within our app. The way I think about this portal, um, I kind of think of customers going into here for, for two reasons. There's like keeping the lights on, and then there is doing some analytics or reporting off of your performance. Uh, what do we mean by keeping the lights on? Well, you need to keep your billing account stocked. You need to make sure that orders that are back ordered are addressed. Uh, you wanna make sure that maybe if you added a new shipping tier in Shopify, that's mapping to the correct shipping tier within our system so that customers who might be paying a premium are getting the shipping service that they asked for. Um, you might also be looking for um, things such as resolving um, any conflicts in our system between maybe adding a new item in Shopify. Uh, there, there's a whole long list of things that I could, I could expand upon. I think we counted them out once. There's about 35 to 40 different things that can be uh, complex between the interaction of your shopping cart and a 3PL. Um, what we generally find is that customers are coming to us uh, looking to focus their efforts on developing a quality product marketing that product and acquiring customers. You're not necessarily looking to read like a 400 page textbook on logistics. So I think the, the software that you're going to see here is an extension of how we like to treat our customers from a business perspective, which is let us handle the logistics, let us distill down the things that you absolutely need to know and require your decision um, and present those to you in an easy way that helps you understand both the options of what you have to take next and what the implications of those options might be. So let's start here on the dashboard. I would categorize this kind of in like the, the, the bucket two of what I mentioned, like let's look at some analytics here. Um, I generally have my revenue, which we can pull from your store, <clears throat> order ship, item shipped, where those items are going within the USA or the world. And then you can see here on the right hand side, we have a breakdown of the, the revenue, cost, cogs, gross profit, et cetera. The reason we can calculate this is through your inbound items, we generally get the cost of goods sold. Um, we obviously know your shipping costs, and then we can pull the retail price that your buyer paid from your store. Um, oftentimes, uh, our customers are doing additional math somewhere else to produce their, uh, their financial statements, but we find this is a really nice uh, tool for uh, customers who might be newer to e-commerce who are looking to just do some quick back of the napkin calculations to see how their business is tracking. If I scroll down here, um, we can what we find is that a lot of the shopping carts out there aren't giving you tremendous analytics on how orders are going out. And those data streams can be a little polluted with uh, different orders that might be sent out, digital products that you might be delivering that don't actually ship out. We want to give you here an insight into exactly what's going out our doors physical packages, boxes, poly mailers that are going to your customers. So we'll show you the forecast we have, the order shipped, and then we'll also give you a snapshot in time of where your orders sit in our various fulfillment statuses. Towards the bottom of this page here, and I'll get into this a little bit more later, but these are back to bucket one, the things that might require your attention. You're gonna see we have a status for action required orders, which means that you need to do something to that order for it to successfully ship out. We have back orders, which means that we have a, uh, an order successfully received by our software, but an item is out of stock and it can't ship out in its entirety. And we also let you know uh, what kind of returns have you received. Sometimes that requires your attention. Sometimes we're automatically returning those to stock. 
the inventory you have low stock, out of stock, and then also inventory that we're expecting to, uh, to arrive at our uh, warehouse, whether that's directly from the manufacturer or sent from one of your facilities. So really everything you see here on this main page gives you a holistic insight into how are the orders going out? What are potential factors that might impact my ability to have orders go out the shipmunk door in the future? All right, let's dig into orders. Most of our customers frankly bookmark this page. This is where they're starting off their day. Um, here I'm looking at all orders. Um, if you look at uh, clients who do significant volume with us, um, the percentage that you see of orders that really require some sort of attention is, is ridiculously small. So frankly, looking at a, a view like this of all orders is a little bit overwhelming. I probably don't need to dig into every single order that's successfully shipping out because that's just us doing our job. Uh, we want to make it really easy in this view to both let you filter this list down to the things that you might find relevant, but then also let you filter this down to the things that we know should be relevant to you to continue successful fulfillment. So what do I mean by that? Well, here on this list, I can filter this by all sorts of different factors. The, the name of the customer, the priority, the email of the customer, the shipping method they use, what items they order. And this can be helpful if you're resolving a customer support inquiry and just want to find a customer whose maybe name was different from the, in their shipping address than um, the name that they emailed you from. So you're trying to track down their order. Uh, this can also be helpful, let's say, if you're trying to pull a report, say, um, how many orders actually went out um, with a two-day shipping service. In that case, you can filter it down, you can export that, put it into Excel and, and run some calculations on that if it's something you're looking to do. Everything here is very configurable though. Um, and this list view here, if I move down my screen, I can see some of these more high priority views. So what does at risk mean? Um, after you ship an order, and this is something that we're really proud of, we track this order all the way until the delivery. So an at-risk order means that something happened between when we first received the order and when it gets delivered to the customer that we think you should draw your attention to. Now, what this might be is it, um, it's been delayed by the carrier and customs. It might be that the carrier likely lost the item. Maybe the item hasn't moved in seven days in the tracking. You probably want to be aware of that and you want to get ahead of that either by processing a reshipment or reaching out to the customer to see if maybe it's been delivered and the tracking just didn't update. Something that we find a lot is that uh, like nothing frustrates a customer more than them having to reach out to ask about the status of their order. So we try to give you as many tools as possible to proactively resolve or proactively communicate to the customer um, what might be happening with their order and then ensure that you're either processing a replacement or informing them of the progress so that they don't feel like the order has just gotten lost in some system somewhere. This isn't like some CSV file you're uploading that you have no idea what the implication might be. We're making it extremely clear through this process exactly what you need to do to add an item and the implications at each step. So let me give you an example. If I was adding that jewelry here, maybe it's uh, jewelry um, one, we we'll go through, like call it a uh, locket, I might have multiple barcodes. Let's say I've switched between a couple of suppliers or a couple of different packagings where they're labeled differently. I can add them all here to make sure that they're properly uh, stored and then that the, they're properly shipped out for the orders. And then I can add the weights and dims. Something that we'll do for you, um, the weights and dims from your perspective sometimes differ from what we need from a weights and dims perspective. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, you might have a t-shirt. And if you're storing them, let's say, in like a, a small warehouse of your own, you might be able to pack those t-shirts away on the shelves in a certain way. And your calculations for how much shelf space you'll need for those t-shirts depend on your weights and dims calculations. What we need to know is that the exact weights and dims that we see for an item in an order match what we're going to give to the carrier. So for every single new item that you send us, we have a laser scanner that's going to measure the exact length width, height and we have a highly accurate scale that gives the pounds and ounces for that item. We'll also take a picture for you just to make sure that everything lines up with what you're expecting. What that ensures is that we have an extremely low rate of packages that go to the carrier that have a, a, an incorrect set of dimensions or an incorrect weight. Again, ensuring that we have the highest possible reliability to get these items to your buyers. I have a question. So yeah. 
Uh, it, this is, of course, it's Tia. So you just said that you take a picture. So you take a picture of all the items? Absolutely, but it's the first item you send. We're not gonna give you, if you send us a thousand items of this locket, we're not yeah, giving you a thousand pictures, but the right. first time we see that, we'll take a picture of it for you. Um, a couple for a couple of reasons. Um, if it's a new item, you're getting it from a supplier, um, ensuring that the supplier labeled the items correctly, um, or assuming that they they probably labeled the the group of items uh, consistently, but maybe they labeled the locket as like the jewelry box, and you really want to make sure that's accurate before all of a sudden you send out a thousand jewelry boxes to people who are expecting lockets. So we do take a picture of every single item. Um, every single new item, I should say, upon receipt um, that serves as the picture in our system, uh, but also serves as a way for you to validate that the products were labeled correctly by whomever manufactured them. Um, okay, so this is good to know. So uh, do you also take a picture, and you may have said this already, of the item when it's packaged and going to be sent out? This is how it's going to look? We do have uh, pictures at all of our pack stations uh, or cameras at all of our pack stations. The purpose of it is not to see the, uh, the final product when it gets packaged out. So I'll be frank, the, the steps between having all the items in the box and quickly applying tape in the label and putting it back in the conveyor belt is like microseconds. But we do have a camera at all of our pack stations for the purpose of auditing the packing performance and accuracy of our fulfillment centers. So that way, if you ever see an item uh, or see an order that says maybe it should have contained three one pound items and you look at it, it's like, well, this looks like a two pound order. The customer is saying that they are missing something. Um, we have pictures that we can look and see, uh, yep, like two items went into here. Um, this one might've gotten left on the table or there's a problem with that. And we clearly know our issue now. The, the customer is shorted one item. And of course, being a fulfillment issue, Shipmonk will cover that on your behalf and we will send out a replacement. Okay, uh, my next question is, uh, do you have customers that may ask you to, hey, can you take a picture of this or take a picture of how this is being done so that they can have it as content for themselves to share? Um, generally, yes. I, if you had an example of something you're looking for, it could give you a little bit more context. Um, but in general, um, yeah, if there's a portion of our warehouse that you're looking to understand um, part I mean, of our process. Yeah, um, it's not even to understand it, but just to show like uh, the level of effort that it takes to get this stuff out to them, you know, just, you know, as mm. content for social media or, uh, or, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, we have a bunch of stock footage for that. Um, 